Right now you're hearing all your favorite music on your favorite station. But wait, there's more. More songs from the artists you love on exclusive stations by Odyssey. Just open the Odyssey app and click exclusive stations, then a genre to dive deeper into. A station might be just music, or maybe hosted by Ed Sheeran, Chris Martin, or one of your favorite DJs. Across alternative pop, country, soft rock, Latin, R&B, kids, and even and more. more. Get more with exclusive stations by Odyssey. Brought to you by Macy's, Geico, and Coke Zero Sugar. Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable organized timeline the chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life please contact me today at choose the right chapter.com that's choose the right chapter.com 99.9 k i s w the rock of seattle really happy to tell you about this new partnership between the rock girls and mary's place lots of homeless out there especially kids man and mary's place what they do is they provide safe, inclusive shelter and services for women, for children, for families here in the Pacific Northwest. It is so needed. You know it's a big problem. And Mary's Place is helping with the solution. Rock Girls helping Mary's Place. You can help with a donation. Go to KISW.com or visit Mary's Place Seattle.org. Let's play B. It is a beautiful day. Man, I can see Mount Rainier. I'm very excited. And it's a beautiful day for another reason. Why's that? Because three years ago, my cat, Dammit Carl, getting the house was born. Happy birthday, Dammit Carl! Yeah. Yeah, happy birthday. Yeah. Three years ago, it came into our life. Yeah. Had a wonderful day. Yeah. Sadly, since um, I've gotten a new box, it seems like my parents' birthday green oh, is not in there. No. So unfortunately, we're not going to have my parents singing a happy birthday. Oh. I mean, fortunately, right? No, I think it's unfortunate. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Well, Wait, oh, the we thought lo- is there. Did we lose it or we will eventually have it? Right. We'll have it eventually. Okay. Okay. I hope oh, so. Good. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, good. yeah. I don't know if we could continue without my mom and dad. <laughs> yeah, I agree, dude. We need to have that. Now, granted, I'm glad we don't have it today because it's just a stupid well, that's- cat. He's but, not a know. stupid cat. He's very smart, and he's listening right now. I love you, Carl, and I'll see you soon. Is he really listening right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We leave the radio on uh, during the day, so he doesn't nice. get lonely, so him and Frank don't get lonely. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, he shares uh, his birthday with uh, Jason Newstead, former bassist of Metallica. Wow. And, fancy. And he shares it with my grandma as well. My grandma turns 90 today. Well, happy birthday well, to Danny's that, grandma. Yes, yeah, so now that's a good, Danny's grandma. Yeah, and Dammit Carl get in the house. No, just Danny's grandma is fine. <laughs> and also Newt Rockney. Who's that? Legendary Notre Dame football coach. Sweet! Yeah. Congratulations! Like, you're, you're really digging, you're digging deep for this one, <laughs> huh? Yeah, it's like, what do you got here? Look, Evan Dando from the Lemonheads. I love the Lemonheads, but who else does? <laughs> yeah. Probably nobody. Yeah. Uh, Christina, Bobby Christina Brown. Okay. That's Bobby and Whitney's daughter. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. See what I'm saying? Newt yeah, is actually not. a pretty good suggestion Newt's, at this point. Uh, yeah. This is all for a cat. Oh, and for Danny's grandma. Landon there Donovan, go. great yeah. soccer player. Okay. <laughs> Chaz Bono. Oh, cool. It's Sweet. Like, uh, it's like everybody's kid. Oh, like uh, the kids are somebody's favorite. <laughs> yeah, and then Dan yeah. McCarl, my uh, fur baby there. Ben, Congratulations. Boom Boom Mancini from a boxer. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and No, your cat's a cat. It's just a, well, he's a cat. It's a, and he's my kid. Stupid. My kid no, cat. No, you don't have a kid. Fine. Oh, the texters are chiming in. Happy birthday, Carl. Carl, happy birthday, damn it, Carl. Oh, thank uh, you. Plus the texters are chiming in just to troll me. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant today. We got Sean in Maple Valley to take on Steve. Sean, are you there, sir? I am. Excellent. What's he playing for today? Tickets. Check out. Dude, this is a, talk about the best way ever to celebrate 420. Yeah? Tickets to see Cheech and Chong at the Emerald <laughs> Queen Casino <laughs> on April 20th. That's there right, 420. Get information, <laughs> details at KISW.com. You can get tickets right now at Ticketmaster.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. Are we all- <laughs> That's amazing. Far out. Yeah, get out. <laughs> For those playing 
Bring it home. Sean will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Sean, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. What year did Jimmy Carter assume office as the 39th president of the United States? 76. No. 78. No. 77. Yes. What is the branch of mathematics that deals with the size and shape of objects? Algebra. No. Geometry. Yes. What cereal company makes Apple Jacks? Quick Road. No. Jay's Kellogg. Yes. The Happy Days spinoff, Joni Loves Chachi, was set in which Midwest city? Who starred alongside Kevin Hart in the movie Ride Along? The Rock. No. Ice Cube. Yes. According to business studies, what is the most productive day of the work week? Thursday. No. Tuesday. Yes. How many tusks sprout from the snout of an adult male warthog? One. No. Four. Yes. Which slogan did Nancy Reagan create for her drug awareness campaign? Don't do drugs. No. <laughs> uh, just say no. Sorry. Yes. What animal body part name also means the center of a target? Pass. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, correct. All right, not too shabby. Pretty good there. Might get himself a win. Get to go mm-hmm. check out Cheech and Chong. I love that, that they're playing here at 420. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Look who's back. Yeah. It is me. It's you. It's Steve. Hi. Hey, you ready to play? Oh, yeah. What year did Jimmy Carter assume office as the 39th president of the United States? Gosh, 78? No. 76? No. 80? No. 74? What, nope. What is the branch of mathematics no. that deals with the size oh, and shape of objects? Things. What? <laughs> what is the branch of mathematics that deals with the size and shape of Algebra. objects? No. Uh, geometry. Yes. Which cereal company makes Apple Jacks? Oh, crap. Uh, is that Post? No. Uh, Mars? No. Mars? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Dunder Mifflin. No! The Happy Day spinoff, Joni Loves Chachi, is set in which Midwest city? Milwaukee? No. Chicago? Yes. Who starred alongside Kevin Hart in the movie Ride Along? Ice Cube. Yes. According to business studies, what is the most productive day of the work week? That would be on Tuesdays. Yes. How many tusks sprout from the snout of an adult male warthog? Two. No. Three. No. One. No. Uh, What slogan did Nancy Reagan create for her drug awareness? campaign just say no yes what animal body part name also means the center of a target bullseye yes one two three four five six six is a lot no! you lose seven to six good job sean wow. <laughs> yeah i love that thank you for playing hang on the line buddy we'll tell you how to get your prize and of course uh well i get my prize and that would be uh, this fine baby <laughs> hate this song. That's why I'm playing it. Loser. Steve. <laughs> ah, if I could get this in the squatty potty, my life would be complete. Mm. Wow. <laughs> well, one of them you can buy on Amazon. <laughs> Uh, the ones that you did get wrong, uh, Sean got correct. So he knew that it was four ta- uh, four tusks on the snout of the warhog. Uh, it's Kellogg's who make Apple Jacks. Yeah, I brain farted that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. you did. And then it was uh, 1977 that Jimmy Carter assumed office. I did. He was elected in 76. Yeah. They're sworn in the year yeah. after. I always forget that. Mm-hmm. And that's why you lose. They like peanuts. Uh, yeah, he was a peanut farmer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I liked him as a kid. I wanted really? him to win because he liked peanuts, and I like peanuts. Well, if my voting you habits voted. haven't changed much yeah. over the years. <laughs> if only you could have voted, right? Yeah. I love that. The sweet age of three. Mm-hmm. Congratulations to Sean on beating Steve this morning. Yeah, if you tie or beat Steve, that's how you get it done, my friends. So Rami Malek, that's a name that pretty much none of us knew, I would say, about a year ago. A lot of us did not yeah. know who the hell Rami Malek was. If you watch the show Mr. Robot, you did. But he now is a household name because uh, he wins an Academy Award for a great movie, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, where he plays Freddie Mercury. Uh, he's also made a promotional video for a hotel chain uh, called Mandarin Oriental, where he lists a bunch of things that he's a fan of. Apparently, some people thought that he came off like a serial killer and turned it into a meme. Rami himself looks really intense. He does. And the yep. character he plays on Mr. Robot is just, yeah, he looks like he's disturbed. So here's the audio of this. I'm a fan of Freddie Mercury and Queen. I'm a fan of my mom. She's got my back. I'm a fan of chamomile tea. I'm a fan of handwritten letters. I'm a fan of looking sharp regardless of the occasion. 
I'm a fan of random encounters. I'm a fan of mischief. Okay. I'm a fan of being exactly who I want to be. I'm a fan of Mandarin Oriental. You see, I can I can hear Matthew McConaughey doing that same read, making it sound less creepy. But Rami, I feel like he yeah. got the role as Mr. Robot because he's got a sort of the stuttered quirkiness. quirkiness to his the way he speaks. Yeah, I'm waiting for him to say, "I'm a fan of chopping up bodies." Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a reason he got this role in this TV show because he plays this just drugged out whack job, and when he just when what? he reads like that, he just sounds like he might be a little disturbed. I don't know what the hell Mandarin Orange is, but like, what are they trying to sell? It's Mandarin Oriental. Mandarin oh. Orange is a great tasty fruit. You might want to try it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> but Mandarin, Mandarin Oriental is a hotel. Monday, man, give me a day. Yeah, okay, no problem. But what, okay, so it's a hotel. What are they hoping to sell with that kind of a commercial, man? You know, I is it because I, he's a superstar. I think that's it. Oh, yeah, uh, right. I, and were they afraid to ask him to do another take? <laughs> Unless they thought that was good. Man, that's awesome. It's going to get people talking. But if you saw the you, you saw those Lincoln commercials with Matthew McConaughey, and they somehow work, even though it's just random as all hell. Yeah, because there's a certain charm to how, like you said, McConaughey delivers it in a yeah. certain way that we all know and love. We don't really know Rami that well. Yeah. And, and it just sounded yeah. like he didn't give an F. So, so why should I give an F about going to this hotel? Yeah, I, I agree. It's maybe not the best choice. And his face kind of looks dead, too. Like, he doesn't know where he is or if he even wants to be there. Like, we secretly drugged this celebrity to talk about our hotel. And this is what it sounded like. I'm a fan of my mom. I'm a fan of doing yeah, his his just his natural way of being. If that's it, I mean, he, he it seems like he's just got one speed. Though I mean, his Freddie Mercury was really good. He looks like a robot who's trying to figure out the things that people want to hear. <laughs> oh, good call. That, that's actually spot on. Yeah, like listening to that and then looking at his movements. It's AI learning how to be human. But I will tell you, his purple outfit is awesome. It is a really sweet outfit. I want to get that jacket and shirt. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Well, I want you to get that jacket and shirt. Oh, the red wants you to look stupid. It probably looks better with his skin tone. He does. Yeah, have it, a, that's he, what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He doesn't look You know, one day I'm going to dress good. You look like Willy Wonka in that jacket. Ah, yes. Oh, okay. Give him a top hat? Yes. Willy Wonka was awesome looking. I'll take that. All right. Yeah, you're talking about Gene Wilder, Wilder, right? Was creepy looking, BJ. Well, well, Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka was awesome. But you have to grow your hair out. Well, I'll have to wear a wig because I, <laughs> I don't have any hair to grow out. Somebody says, thanks, you jerks. You told me to watch Bohemian Rhapsody. My fiance watched it with me. Let's just say we've watched it five times this past weekend. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. I'm glad you loved it that much. That's impressive. Yeah. Five times in one weekend? Yeah. We watched Jumanji this weekend. That was fun. Was it? It took you a while to get to that. Well, we watched it the first time. Neither one of us remembered a single thing. We fell asleep on it, and we never got back to it in, within the window of watching it on, on demand. So now it's on like one of the premium channels. And it's a freaking funny movie. It's, a, it's well done. Yeah. Yeah, it really, really is well done. Jack uh, Black, and I'm, I've kind of been burnt out on Jack Black, but Jack Black is so good in this film. He is. He, he's understated. You know, if you, he and Will Ferrell, when they do some understated stuff, they're really entertaining because we know the characters that they've done for so many years, so it is nice to see them do something different. You recognize Karen, you may not recognize the, the redhead Karen Gillan. She plays Nebula in the Avengers movie, that blue robot lady. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, yes, and Karen's awesome. So, I, I, she's a great actor. Oh, speaking of movies, someone want to know, what movie would you guys say you've seen the most? I've seen Chasing Amy probably 60 times. Gosh, it's been a while. It'd be nice to see if that still holds up, Chasing Amy. That was a fun movie. I mean, I think Miracle might be... Miracle and Rocky. Uh, oh, man, but I, there was a moment where I watched Half-Baked almost every week. Wow. That's a movie, though, man. Was, yeah. I would put it on before I'd go to bed and, you know, just. Yeah. And then I'd try and fast forward to where I think I fell asleep on it. It was just such a fun <laughs> film that you don't need to see the whole movie. There's enough fun moments that it's like you could just kind of like. It, no different than like Office Space or Waiting. Oh, yeah. Those are all movies I've seen. Oh, those are good clicks, yeah. At least double digits on yeah. all of them. I can't argue with either one of those. Yeah. What those, about you, though? Uh, the Matrix is the Matrix. my jam. Yeah. That makes sense. For me, it's Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Oh, yeah, you're one of those ones. With that for I a can while. just watch it over. I bought the soundtrack. I don't buy soundtracks for anything, but the soundtrack was so good that I had to buy it. I own that Blu-ray. I gotta watch that again. I've, I've only watched yes. it once. Ah, what's and, wrong with you? But I, and I like the movie. There's nothing. I mean, you're, I don't know why I haven't watched it again because it's, of course, it's Edgar Wright, and I love him. Mm-hmm. And um, yet, it's just like, wow. Yeah, I keep forgetting about it. Yeah, it's really good. Damn. As a as an adult, mine was is Super Troopers. 
Oh yeah. yeah. Oh the uh, the other the other one I think just came on demand or something. Ooh. It's uh, on Netflix. Or ne- it's Netflix. I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what it is. I knew so, the first one used to be on Netflix, and that's how I'd watch it all the time. I watch Beer Fest more than Super Troopers. Huh. I think I, I just love Beer Fest. It's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's either Titanic for oh. me. Uh, Nobody boy. asked you, Danny. Well, yeah. stupid hand. For, was, especially, I think, yeah, with your broken hand, we said no. Uh, you know, but recently I've been watching Forget Us, Forgetting Sarah Marshall a lot. Oh, I'm, probably, I'm probably at around 50 times seeing that one. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah, so what I, do you think about Get Him to the Greek? Uh, oh, it's okay. If you didn't have a broken hand, I'd hit you. Wow. Look, Get Him to the Greek is good, but I do think Forgetting Sarah Marshall is a little better. Way better. No, no, no. I'm uh-huh. saying a little better. I'm no. not saying, I think they're both good movies, no. but I think I got to give the nod to no debate. Get him to because the Greek it's got, is a way uh, better film. It's got Jason. Uh, like Jason Segel, no, Jonah Hill. Nobody's smoking Jeffries and petting furry world. Oh, you're talking about forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yeah, forget, yeah, yeah. It's got Jason Segel, and yeah. I just think that Jason's really he's a good guy. He's fun. Come on, the the, the see what P did in his own head is like better than that whole movie. Nah. Oh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. And that's a good movie. I'm not saying uh, it's bad. Okay, but get it has Mila the, Kunis and Kristen Bell in it. Oh boy. <laughs> That's another. You know what? Those are all two good reasons as well. In Danny. bikinis. Why am I agreeing with Danny? But I think he's my. Yeah. And look, get, I like get him to the Greek, but I just think Sarah Marshall's a little better. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't. You know why? I don't like Russell Brand that much. So uh, oh, Russell uh, Brand. Now you, you now get gosh. the hell out of the room. Now you. Why'd you have to hurt yourself? This Jesus weekend? God! Now you know what? I'm 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 back with you, Steve. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. So, I'm not saying he's bad. Russell I'm just Brand saying, is great. I would rather follow him, Jason Siegel, than Russell Brand. Plus, he's a great comic where he pisses everybody off because he just does. He fights the man. Man. And you gotta love a guy that fights the man. Get him to the Greek is one of the best movies. I'd put that also as a movie I've watched multiple times. Wow. Yeah. It's so good. Huh? Damn. I guess we'll have to agree to disagree on this yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So he says the Goonies. I've seen it at least 70 times. Yeah. I'll give it, you know, I'm gonna give a recommendation for the pre. If anybody's kind of new wavy spiritual, here's why I want to give this recommendation. Rev. Yeah, Rev. Um, but you also like action movies. This movie got, I mean, it got 68% on Rotten Tomatoes, so it's not a horrible movie. Oh but a lot of folks, perfect. a lot of folks didn't like the goofy science in it, but really this isn't a science movie, even though it made it look like it was a science movie. I think people missed the boat. It's from the Fifth Element guy, Luke Besson, and the movie's called Lucy with Scarlett Johansson. That was a really good movie. I'm glad you said that. I'm, I'm very surprised that you would say that because I would think you would be like, this movie's too weird for me. No, that movie was awesome. But it was also so my wife, I was like, it took me years because I've I've had I bought the movie in 2015, like when it came when when it was available for sale, and I've been afraid to show it to my wife for pretty much four years. And then finally this weekend, I said, "Honey, we're." She says, "I don't know what what, what do you want to watch? What do you want to do?" I go, "Let's try Lucy. Let's just see what you think. If you mm-hmm. hate it, the beginning of the movie is a little tough, just because she doesn't like violence, and there's some violence at the beginning yeah. of the movie. But then it changes gears and becomes a completely different movie. And I think Scarlett Johansson does a terrific job in it. Um, and there's a spiritual nature to it which I think got lost on the folks that didn't like the goofy science. I don't remember everything about the movie because it's been forever. I mean we watched it when it first came out on demand but that was one of those movies that was so good that we didn't fall asleep on. I, just, I, was, I know that sounds <laughs> stupid but that's how I remember certain films. I'm like that movie was so awesome that we didn't, it's no different than Bohemian Rhapsody. It was like we did not fall asleep on it. And you know something Rev and Joey D's. I'm going to tell you I think I know the secret to sometimes why a movie is bad because Luke Besson also did the movie Valerian which we were also looking forward to. Oh yes. Yeah, so so it's just that not a good movie. I don't even know what the hell it was. a great sci-fi graphic novel. And gotcha. was, you know, we thought Luke is a great guy, uh, Fifth Element. But the, act, the the actors in that movie were not that good. Whereas Scarlett Johansson's a good actor. Morgan Freeman's a good actor. Uh, you know, and I feel like sometimes, man, you don't get the right actors and the movie just sucks. Mm-hmm. And and it, 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 that's that's what happened with Valerian. The, 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 main, the two main people, the guy and the, the girl, I just thought, eh, eh. But ScarJo, yeah, she's you know, she's the thing. You she's had me until you called her ScarJo. Well, you know, listen, that's what, that's what all her friends call her. And then, you know, what can I tell you? Best buds forever. All right, it's time for Listeners on the Loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Whatever you want to talk about, your calls, your texts at 917 on the Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on the Rock. 99.9 KISW. 9.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show at 206 421 Rock. You can also text us at 77999. Listeners on the loose brought to you by Beacon Plumbing, Heating, and Mechanical. What do you want to talk about? It doesn't matter. It's brand new, it's brand old. 
You can do it. But uh, Steve does still have that rule. All right, show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we're going to have to gong you. And then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. 206 rock Text us at 77999. Peter in Seattle, you are on the rock. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Peter. Welcome to the show, sir. What you got for us, buddy? Uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about Prodigy. Um, Being from Europe, you know, their music was a lot to my generation, what like the Beatles and the Stones were to my father's generation. It uh, helped open up people's minds and kind of helped with the freedom of speech for other artists, being that their lyrics were so controversial. Oh, really? Uh, So so where you're from, because I mean, I don't know if we really thought the lyrics were that controversial for America, but you're saying from in Europe they were yeah things were happening a little slower you know we're probably like 10 years behind America but our government was involved in like you know kind of shutting down people that uh, that you know music like that wasn't played on the radio and on TV mm-hmm. even MTV had problems you know yeah. Steve mentioned to play their music after midnight. Um, they were a great band. You know, they came up with a bunch of albums. I know they were kind of like electronic style, but also their first album, which was Their Law, was almost all instrumental. And especially for Steve, I mean, the drums and the bass that, you know, was in their music was just amazing. I mean, I was blown away since I bought my first album. I'll have to check um, that one out. Also, yeah, and then also, uh, you know, they're comparing them to Nirvana, it's, they're a totally different gen- genre of music. Uh, you can't compare the two. And uh, I'm just so sad about it. You know, the guy was super young. They were a great band. Um, super bummed about it. I actually didn't see the news I heard on your guys' show oh, wow. the first time. And it kind of shocked me. So I'm super sad today. I'm a huge fan of Prodigy for Life. Their music was featured in, like, John Wick soundtrack. It was uh, a bunch of songs were on the Matrix and all the Matrix movies. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, so so super sad about that, and I just want to rest in peace, Flint. Uh, he was definitely one of the greatest, and uh, I'm super bummed out about it. So that's oh. all. That's oh, Peter, thank, love, my man. Much thank love. you for the call, Peter. Uh, you know, it, it, it's interesting because we get calls from Peter, and they're usually a lot more upbeat and fun, and usually involve being stoned. Mm-hmm. And uh, but he educated me because I had no idea that, in fact, lyrically and as far as their message, it was really inspirational to where they were in the world. Makes sense; they were big in Europe, considered because they had a deep message for the folks out there that, you know, we didn't have that problem, so the message didn't hit us the same way. Uh, somebody wanted, a lot of people actually text up how heartbroken they are about the passing of Keith Flint, uh, 49 years old, for those that didn't hear. Uh, yeah. from, from the front guy from The Prodigy. Uh, the guy with the crazy hair. I just thought a lot of people remember me. I like that his hair was like styled into like two little devil horns, or he had the, like, the weird like reverse mohawk thing going on as well. Uh, somebody texted about music uh, regarding Motley Crue. Uh, I remember Steve talking about the Motley Crew book The Dirt a couple of weeks ago, so I went out and bought it. I read it in two days. Those guys were effing nuts. Thanks for the recommendation, Steve. It'd be interesting if he has your same opinion that they just couldn't do the book right, or uh, you know, for the Netflix show that's going to that's come out. I think anyone who's read the book will agree that they're not going to be able to. It's, I don't want to ever become that person, but this might be the one time where I'm like, it's not as good as the book. I don't think I'd ever be able to say that. Thank you, Netflix, for giving me the opportunity that I can say it's not as good as the dirt, the book. <laughs> Have it, well, it's not out yet, though, is I, it? I, I, I know, but I know it's not going to be as good as the book. Wow. There's no way already. they can do what the book did. There's not a chance. Well, if, they, if they pull it off, man, they yeah. deserve an Academy Award. And do you want them to show you everything that's in the book? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. I got no problem with that. So, I want to see the burrito scene. Okay. They're not going to do it. How do you know? Don't, I mean, Netflix, man. I mean, if they put disclaimers and everything, there's no reason why they can't do whatever they want. What do you want to bet? I don't want to bet anything because I I, I haven't read the book as much as you to think that <laughs> I find it hard to believe there's something in anything that wouldn't be put on television. I mean, I watch Game of Thrones. Some stuff happens in that. All right, let's bet a burrito. Black Mirror. Yeah, bet mean, a burrito. Bet a burrito. All right, I'll bet a, a burrito. Choice. It's well, the, a burrito that's not uh, <laughs> the Motley Crue burrito. Yeah. Well, duh, yeah. BJ. That's a little weird. Oh, well, duh. Okay, listen. I watch Van Wilder. Okay, I've got to be careful what my donuts and burritos are going to be stuffed with. No, just regular burrito. So where are you going? If I, a burrito of your choice. What do you going with oh you know what i mean i used to be default chipotle but oh i mean i have to say that i mean I'm, I'm i'm a little wary just because you know chipotle for some reason just continues to every once in a while pop in the news i'll just stay away from the lettuce okay the lettuce is all i gotta worry about yeah how about you uh there's a place in gig harbor i think it's a chain uh but the, we go to sometimes after church called uh, blue agave oh i don't know blue agave they have the best 
Uh, crap, I can't remember. What, the what best crap? All right, I'm going. Fajita burrito. Uh, ooh. Okay. Yes, those are so good. Should we, uh, so good. Should we ask Vicky and Danny? Maybe they know better. I mean, because, you know. Why I would mean, they? Well, it's, I mean, it's, it's their culture's cuisine, isn't it? No? Am yes. I wrong? It's not no, Mexican? You're right. Fine. Yes. Oh, all right. Vicky, what would you go with? Your uh, burrito of choice if you had a better burrito. I had to find what it was called. It's a taco truck in North Everett called Taqueria Doña Maria. Maridio. Oh, okay. I I, I, taqueria Lo Maridio. Doña Mari. Doña Mari. Truck? It's a taco truck. Oh, they Where have, is this? It's in North Everett, right past the Ever Community College. It's okay. so freaking good. There's one I want to go to in, in Puyallup that's like a big old bus. It's right on Meridian. I keep wanting to stop there, but I haven't yet, and everybody swears by it. Vicky, I want you to go to the taco truck that's in Lincoln Square. It's actually in the mall, but it is a taco truck in the mall. Like they, is it like fancy it, and the pictures are all nice? And I, no, no, it's it, it's like well, I don't know if you, it's, it's it's the food court in Lincoln Square, which is a cool food court. It's not anybody. It's not any food that you would know like in a traditional food court. Like there's separate restaurants, and they I've never seen these restaurants anywhere, but in this Lincoln Square food court. But they've got a taco truck like right in the food court. And so I, 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 I just wondered how good it was. And I figured, you know what? You go. See, I feel like with taco trucks, if it's one of the fancy ones where you can tell they spray painted the outside, they have a really cool logo and yeah, you don't think- nice pictures. It has mm-hmm. to look like you took them on a crappy cell phone. Yeah. It's um, like it has to like that. Oh, I've walked by it. I've and seen I, it. Like I an just- old flip phone cell phone, not even yeah. a new cell phone. I like, haven't I haven't been there yet. I haven't. Uh, like I haven't anything gone. that looks pretty is very hipster. And I'm, I'm sure the food is good, but you will get better food. I right. like the like old, you know, family run taco trucks. OK. Dang it. And dude, at that blue agave place, which might not even be a chain one in Gig Harbor, the, the burrito is like the size oh, of your head. That's awesome. Oh, that's like that a big burrito. plate. Oh my gosh. That looks so good. And every time I get it, my wife's just like, you're not going to eat that whole thing, are you? I'm like, well, I'm yeah. sure as hell going to try. And, and there's you, been a few times where I haven't been. Oh, you haven't? Time. Yeah. Well, that is a surprise Although, to this me. This past Saturday, I, I crushed the whole thing. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Loved every bite of it. Oh. See, so you, you guys got to try the Bang Bang Kitchen. Where's bang, that? Bang Bang. Bang It's an Othello. And it's uh, where the hell's Othello? Mm. I've, I've, <laughs> I, that's just what I was told. That that's where we were. Uh, but it's they serve New Mexican style what the hell breakfast are you doing burritos. Othello? Is it? Do you know where it is, around? Steve? No. Where's what? Is it in Washington State? Yeah, it's in Washington. It's right by that place. Yeah. I don't even know Othello. It's think- near Ellensburg ish. Oh, dude, you are right 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 there. No, you, you like- guys, the Othello neighborhood in Seattle. Yeah. Oh, so down off of Danny. MLK oh. and Myrtle. Oh, oh okay. there's a city, Othello. Oh, I am. Um, I was like I said, I was just told that I was in Othello. I was like, all right. So that okay, means. so it's it's near MLK. Yeah. Okay, so that's yes. we can we can get there. Yeah. I, said, I said I'm not going to go across the passes just for a burrito. I just I can't do it. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, what the hell, dude? Like, when the hell did you end up there? Yeah. <laughs> I never I was like, we didn't drive neighbors. that far. Why are you guys freaking out about it? But yeah, I don't know, man. They serve uh, New Mexico style breakfast burritos, and it's a good callback to home. They yeah. have one in Belltown. Well, all right then. So we have two choices. I've never heard of the bang bang. bang. <laughs> Gordito's is also a really good place because they have uh, the baby burritos. Oh. A lot of people put their babies next to these burritos to show how big these oh, burritos were. Oh, look at people doing that. It was That's- actually one of the places that were affected when uh, that one restaurant exploded in Greenwood. Oh. A lot of their, their windows weren't out there. Oh, that place is amazing. Oh, it's real good. Yeah, it's Giant okay. really good. A lot of people are texting that. I need to check out that up. The, the, the taco bus in Puyallup. It's the bomb, according to one person. One person says it's so good that they're opening a restaurant in that closed down uh, Chinese buffet across the street. Whoa. That's pretty awesome that you're, you're that popular that you've yeah. gone from a bus to an actual establishment. I love a success story. All right, so again, this is all dependent upon how good the dirt's going to be on Netflix. If they're going to include the burrito scene. Okay, so all right, I That's appreciate all they have to do. I appreciate that. So, uh, how far do they have to go? If they just mention it, if they show it about to happen, what do you, you need to see a burrito? Okay. You don't need to see Tommy's right. dong. Okay, if they, if they show the burrito. <laughs> they have to show the burrito. And that, and I would imagine they'll infer that Tommy's dong is somehow going to be involved oh, yeah. with it. it was, yeah. I think it was Tommy and Nikki that used it as a way to deter their girlfriends from knowing that they were doing stuff with other people. That's how they cleaned it. Oh. I, I don't know how else to describe it without getting too No, you're dead. Yeah, that's about all you need to... Yeah. Wow. And it's weird that we're betting wow. actual food based on that story, but that's how much we love food. Wow. That's... Oh, so it's <laughs> just, don't, don't be stupid. It. Go to the taco bus. Make sure you get the green hot sauce. Yeah. I, I, I don't have to go there today. Now that you've mentioned it, I don't know if I yeah. want a burrito anymore. Now that oh, I, I don't care. <laughs> I'll eat a burrito while watching that scene. Wow. Not a problem. Hardcore. All right. All right. Bang, bang.
Morning. <laughs> hey, so listeners, all of those, you pick the topic, you guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. More of your calls and texts at 933 on The Rock. BJ and Mix Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Uh, someone texted it based on uh, movies that you've seen multiple times. Someone said that they saw The Dark Knight Rises six times in one day in the theaters. I still oh. watch it every single year. That sounds like my idea of a great time. Uh, most I've ever seen a movie is, is twice in one day. In back one day? Back. Yeah. Most I, of, that's the most I've ever done, but six times? Oh, that's a fun time. You've clearly never babysat little kids. Yeah. In a movie theater. In a movie oh, theater, a movie we're theater. talking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a movie theater. No, at home, uh-huh. sure, yeah. Yeah, I had a friend whose kid loved Avatar, and every time we'd go over there to visit, it was like my wife's friend as well, and they're just like, I'm like Avatar again? They're like, it's never not on. It's, it's, the, it's <laughs> That's it. The blue one or the cartoon? No, the, the blue okay. one. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's crazy visuals. Okay, I mean, like, that you know, makes sense. I was just thinking the other one. But. Kid like taking mushrooms. It's, you know, it's nothing. <laughs> I mean, I what kind of take kid. mushrooms? I mean, that's yeah. just how, you know, it's how you expand your life. <laughs> oh, we got to text BJ. I thought of you. I was looking at the USA Today, and they had a whole thing about rules for communicating in the digital age, and it made me think of your stupid rules. My rules are not stupid, nah. you know. But he's right. They have a. They, they, I'm, I'm very happy that the USA Today did this. You have 15 new rules for communication oh. in the digital age that we should all start following. Okay, I want to see how guilty or how good we are with these. Yeah, and this one I totally agree with. Number one, do not randomly FaceTime people. Yes, we don't want visual communication uh, on, on demand like that. I know they're trying to sell the portal and the uh, the Echo Show and all these things. No. but we like being able to just not be seen. And how else can I roll my eyes when I'm talking to somebody. Exactly. My parents would never talk to me if they knew. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you don't have to look your best. You can. It doesn't matter if your hair is combed. If you, if you, if you, you, know, you just got crap all over your shirt. It don't matter. Dude, one time, um, uh, D. Ted Smith and I were doing the mega cast. And we were interviewing uh, Moose, who's a wrestler. He was coming for Defy. And speaking of Defy, they're going to be here this Friday. It's going to be a blast um, at the Washington Hall. But so we were going to call Moose to do the interview, and I was like, "Oh, let's do it on FaceTime audio because the audio quality is better." So I hit video instead of audio, and it was so awkward. Oh. Because, like, there he is, and he's just answering as he's driving. And I'm like, you know, you're just making eye contact with someone that you're not expecting. And I'm just like, I can't hang up on him now that we've made eye contact. Oh, yeah. I'm like, hey, Moose, sorry, I didn't mean to FaceTime you. No. Munson does it all the time because whenever he's on the crapper, he wants to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the I, best uh, time to do it. That yeah. I appreciate. It's funny. <laughs> I like this. One word texts like K and LOL are conversation killers. Don't respond with one word replies unless you don't want to talk anymore. And that's... But nobody gets the hint. You're right, dude. I had a conversation yesterday with someone who I never talked to. Out of the blue, he just hits me up to talk about some random like wrestling stuff. And I just kept giving the cool... Ha ha. Yeah. Then I'm, and now I'm at emojis. And I'm like six emojis deep. And I'm finally like, I'm, well, just gonna, emojis I'm, are I'm the, done. Emojis are what's supposed to be the indicator that you're done. Right. But he kept talking. And, and that's finally crazy. I just hit a point where I'm like, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. It's like we're just like sending signals to each other. Yeah. I feel like the thumbs up emoji is the oh, like, hey, that's cool. it. We're done. It's we're the done, cool done. story, bro. Yeah. 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 It, that's I know. Even I know that. And I, and I t- but see, I don't like writing. So mm-hmm. texting for me is a pain because I, I you, you talk know. to text. It's always funny. To People see always get, get mad at me, but I just, yeah, at least I, you don't proofread it. Yeah, well, it's that. <laughs> But see, I like talking, which is why I, I'll do the texting via talking, because it's, I don't like texting. I like talking. It's better than autocorrect with you. I yeah. swear to God. It's like, well, let's see if we can figure out what you're trying to say. It's a puzzle. Piece it together. Yeah. And then, all right, I think I know what he means. Although I do love being in a room when you're texting someone and by texting t- text to tie or talk to text, because you're just like, hey, Bill, comma, how are you, question mark, dot. And it's like you have all like. It's, it's, I know. I know. I know the language. I feel like I'm speaking you're, code. You're pretty good at it. It, it just, buddy. It's hard for it to understand you, apparently. Yeah. If someone you know comments on a photo or video that you posted, you should respond. Not necessarily a written response. A like or love is okay. Unless they post something stupid and I just yeah. let it sit there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's and for me, like with the rock girls, I just, I don't want to be the old guy that, you know, this. our rock girls put up some beautiful pictures, but a lot of them, some of them can be scantily clad. Like, we have that one rock girl that did some great, like, body painting as Captain Marvel. Oh, is that rock Lindsay. girl? Lindsay. Yeah, yep. 
and but you know, I mean, she's body painted, which means she's got no clothes on. So I'm a little worried. Like if I thumbs up that, do I look like the old guy? I mean, it's beautiful, but I don't want to look like I'm a creep. That's fair. Luckily, we had access to your Facebook page, and we just sent three eggplant emojis. Oh, so yeah, that, that works with a thumbs up. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly how I'd want it to go across. Yes. Uh, don't switch from uh, to a different form of communication. Meaning, if somebody emails you, respond via email. Don't text, and if they oh text, gosh. don't okay. email. That sounds like a BJ rule. I like that rule. Just do whatever gets the answers that you need. Yeah, it's just the trouble is though for me if I'm if you're asking questions and I need to refer back, that's where if you switch communication, it's like yeah, following the threads is a giant pain in the butt. Then yeah, see Steve, come on. My bad. I guess I'm breaking the rules. You are yeah, breaking the rules. Rule Follow, breaker. stay on thread, buddy. Okay. How about this? Don't like your own post. It makes you look desperate to get the number up. No. What if you really, really liked what you said? I've liked plenty of posts because I thought they were awesome when I looked back and read them. Wow. I think you've just answered the question. You, you sound desperate even explaining that. If I'm at 99 likes on Instagram, I'm going to like it so I get that cool 100, guys. 468? No, oh, 100% all the time. <laughs> that is the only time I will approve. Or if you're at 419, I will, appro- <laughs> I will approve 419 or 68. 4665. Yeah. Well, all right, Mark of the nice. Devil. Okay, I don't I mean, if that's what you want to do. I'm the beast. <laughs> but then I'll unlike it as soon as I get to what I wanted. It, so. There you go. Yeah. All right, we're talking about the 15 so rules. Uh, <laughs> these are 15 new rules for communicating in the digital age. Do not ask for likes, comments, or shares. Sounds pretty lame if you do. Share, like, subscribe. I always love the people, if I get 300 likes, I'm going to insert here. Well, that, actually, I would like. Yeah, that I would do. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if Candy Cane Emily was on uh, Facebook, yeah, I would uh, like, can I right? like it more than once. Yes. Uh, if someone doesn't text back right away, settle down. It's not a big deal. But also, don't take hours to return a text unless there's a good reason. Oh. Sometimes I just don't want to get in. Like, I know that if I respond right away, it's going to lead to a nonstop group of texts. I'm like just about to leave for work, and I don't want to be texting on, on in the car or whatever it may be. Yeah. So I just like, I'll get to it later. I don't think anybody should text anybody. And I'm tired of people that won't go on Facebook. You know what? It's time to get a Facebook account so just, just for messaging. Deal with it. I don't care. Get it for messaging because it's oh, a communication it's tool. part of the rules? It is because I've talked to people in business, and they've said, hey, I want you to help me out with this. Can you network me with somebody else? I'm like, sure. It just happened this week. Weekend. Somebody wanted me to network them to help them sell something. Mm-hmm. I thought, no, oh, all squatty right, sure. It wish it was squatty potties. I would have got a free one. And the person's like, but I'm not on Facebook. And I'm like, well, you know what? It would have been easier for just for me to be able to hook you up with somebody via Facebook. It's an easy way to start threads and do group messages. I go, come on. You don't have to do anything else on Facebook. Don't respond to anything, but yeah. use it as a messaging tool. I guess you could have the app and not actually have the yeah. just the messaging part of the app and not even pay attention to your actual Facebook page. It's, it's lame. I think people are lame. It's just like, you know what? You're lazy and don't want to learn new things. And look, I'm 102 years old, and I get that you don't want to new, new learn thing, uh, new, uh, learn new things either. <laughs> or speak. Or new learn things. <laughs> I want to learn things. How about this one? Uh, you don't have. Oh, so where am I over here? Oh, yeah, not nine. Um, if you uh, if you have time to post on Snapchat or Instagram, then you better be returning texts. Oh, see, I've yeah. seen that a lot. Why, with why people. are we coming so needy? I had that happen before. I saw you just posted a picture on Snapchat or, or on Instagram. How come you haven't gone back to me yet? Because I don't want to talk to you, you needy F. That's why. <laughs> what else do you want from me? The only time I get irritated at that is if I'm organizing an event that requires to know if people are showing up or not or whatever. Yeah. And then I'm asking, hey, guys, are we still cool for this time? Everyone's coming. And no response from one of the guys. But I see him just posting his BS on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, you know what, dude? Go F yourself. I mean, it's because I'm you the one. You write that. Hey, dude, go F yourself. I kind of Comment do. on those pictures. I kind of do. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm that guy. It's like, you know what? If you want me to organize stuff, then please do me the courtesy of at least responding. I'm the one putting this whole thing together for you, and you're on there putting your political opinions up there like anybody gives a crap about that. I care. I want to know what they think. How about this? You don't have to leave a voice message. Everyone has caller ID, so you can stop leaving messages like, hey, it's me, just calling to check in. If you don't leave a voice message, A, I'm probably not going to be answering your phone call. So send me a text or something being yeah. like, hey, I want to chat or something. 
I'm kind of hypocritical with it. I, I feel you, Rev, because it's like if you're not leaving a voicemail, I'm not calling you back. But don't leave me a voicemail. Yeah. So then to text and be well, like, see, hey, can, can we but talk see, or something? Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I usually hang up when it gets to voicemail, thinking that you know what, anything I'd say, I could just text them. Sometimes I'll just read their text, uh, their voicemail when it transcribes on your iPhone. Yeah, I don't even really, don't listen. <laughs> I can't. That's one to do. I'll tell you what I have done, and it's kind of morbid. I, I mean, voicemail for me is like I only want to hear voices of people I love. Mm. And I save them on there, figuring I'll be that guy that if my wife passes away before me, I'll just be listening to all of her voicemails, and which dude, is kind of it's kind of morbid. But that's all I use my voicemail for. I, 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 I'm, I'm a, I have a lot of uh, voicemails from my parents saved on my phone for that. And I hope that that doesn't have to happen anytime soon. And I keep meaning to just forward them to my email account so I have them saved. But like that's something that you think about, man. When and you hear these stories about people who keep their voicemails and it helps them deal with the pain of losing somebody. And if you learn how to forward them to your emails, will you show me how? Yeah, because I want to. Really Thing, the share I'm, button. I'm filling up my voicemail thing. You just hit the share button and it, it, oh, yeah? You, yeah, you just pick what where how you want to share it. Oh damn, Daniel. All right. Yeah. Huh? How about this? Okay. Well, Thanks for teaching me, buddy. Anytime, man. I'm here. Hey, if someone asks you multiple questions via text, address all of them. Don't just reply to one part of the message. No, don't you know what? Don't ask me anything via text. Text is for emergencies. That's what oh, you geez. use Facebook for. This is bad. You shouldn't have to be caught up in like a. a if you've what does got it a matter, if it's a, you're gonna look on your phone regardless. What does it matter if it's a text message, an Instagram message, a Facebook message, yeah. or a Snapchat? Well, Snapchat yeah. sucks because if you if you pull off of it and you didn't save it, then you lose the message. Because uh, most that one, I, I agree. You shouldn't be using that for any kind of business stuff. I am. I don't want people to like buzzing my phone, texting me with stuff. If it's work stuff, you know what? I don't even want you calling me unless you're really somebody that I know and it's an emergency. Otherwise, use the work stuff, which I think Facebook and email is for work. What else, Anything else, it's like, really? We'll just talk. Who are you to say that Facebook is meant for work? That's what I say. And I mean, who am I? Who am I? I am your digital monarch! What? That's who I am. Yeah. Don't forget it, Vicky. Uh-huh. How about this? Don't go on. Uh, don't go on Facebook and post a bunch of cheesy quotes or memes back to back. Please Vicky. don't. Please stop with the memes, people. Oh, Unless they're super life. funny. Oh, it's just like everyone's like <laughs> political. Like mm. anything can just be summed up in a meme. Then you have nothing. You have no thoughts. You're an idiot. Wow. I see that a lot. I, I recently was in a little bit of controversy on uh, on a Facebook group chat thing, and everybody responding with their memes. And I'm just like, really? This is your life now, huh? You don't have anything you can say? You just throw a meme out there? Yeah. Yeah, we communicate via memes. Yeah, yeah. which is like, I've seen that meme so many of times. A, it's, it's just an extension of a freaking emoji these yeah. days. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes I'll, if you can find a funny, creative gif on your phone, I don't know, man. I think it's funny. Yeah, I ain't gonna. I think if it's a serious <laughs> conversation, I'm not. I, 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 if you want to be funny, that's cool. But I guess if it's a serious conversation, yeah. I take offense to it. It sort of trivializes. Well, it's not like someone's thing. like, "Hey, man, my brother died. I'm not gonna send him a gif of the Undertaker and from wrestling. Be like, right. sorry to hear that." Rest Actually, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> no, I'm laughing I think it's I might ter- do that. It's a terrible idea, but the best kind of terrible I idea. I think I like this idea. <laughs> If someone asks you, uh, I should say, excuse me. If it's perfectly acceptable, to just text "Happy Birthday" now. Why wouldn't that? it be? I guess before, like texting somebody used to be lame. Like anything important, like birthdays, breakups, or whatever, you were never supposed to text it. You were supposed to verbally acknowledge oh, that. No, that's a. I mean, if you want to give me a birthday gift, don't call me. <laughs> I feel like a lot I like of that times, idea. it's like this weird. You know how like MySpace had the top eight, and if you people would get mad if they weren't in your top eight. Yeah. I feel like if you don't post like a picture with you and the person's whose birthday it is, and like, oh my god, I love this person so much. You're describing Danny over there, you right? Know. Some people get butter. Like if you just do You're a regular happy birthday. Well, exactly. It, but I know, is, and that's kind of what I mean. Like, I'd rather text them personally and be like, happy birthday, bro. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, the public proclamations don't get it. My buddy just did this. He pro- he publicly proclaimed how much he loves this woman. And it was a long thing about, I want to spend this part of you and that part of you and for the rest of my life. And then right in, later on down the road, she goes, me too, honey. And it's like, well, if you two morons are even able to see this, why don't you just say it to yourselves and spare me the grief of your love? I get it. You love each other. La, la, la. Talk to me in 34 years like my wife and I where we go you know what We're go after together. yourselves <laughs> yeah because that's where it's going to go uh, these young love people don't know that in 34 years you know you're going to be you're going to be like how are you doing honey I'm okay alright yeah my bowels seem to be okay good we're good but the public proclamation yes. on Facebook about how much I love it, and then she's standing this is right what there. People do, man. I, I'm with you. I don't even do. Well, you know, my wife doesn't even have Facebook, so I don't even have to bother with like writing any of those stupid. How'd you things. get so lucky? Because your wife is like Facebook she hates generation. everybody on Facebook. It was just driving her insane. It's so of she you, just Danny. she just had to just get rid Good of it for her. Yeah, you know what? another reason why your wife is awesome.
Oh, crap. Why do you have to show me that, Vicky? What's that? Breaking news. What's going on? Blue Perry passed away. What? what? Yeah, it just was posted by TMZ one minute ago. Oi, oi, oi. We were just talking last week how Luke Perry wasn't too. He wasn't doing well, and they were talking they about stroke. The, the, the Beverly Hills. Yeah. What the F, man? And everything, and now Holy he's gone. Crap. A stroke. God dang. Dude, I am telling you, this stroke is no joke. And, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm because I know a buddy of mine, wow. a buddy you know, Steve, that they thought would be dead too had he not actually gone on, you know, and he did some really rigorous activity. And because of it, they detected the stuff in him and did a massive exam. And he's healthy too. You, I mean, this stroke stuff is yeah. nuts. That's awful, man. Whoa. That just sucks. Wow. So Luke Perry, 52. 52 years old, just passed away. That's breaking news right now. Wow, dude. God, that's sad news. All right, um, it's time to answer this important question. What do Ryan Castle and Cheese have in common? I'm going to tell you at 948 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock at 99.9 KISW. He's the drunk in charge. Now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and Cheese have in common? Culture. Yeah. Yes. Wait a minute, are you? Sure. All right. I've been all over the place, like to Yakima. <laughs> oh, you are cultured. That's, I forgot That's about that. Far. I was yeah. I was once in all three of the Tri-Cities. Wow. You know what? It feels like you've been around the world at that point. Go Americans. Richland, Pasco, and the other one. Yeah, and the other one, which is, by the way, I mean, if you go to the tri- all three Tri-Cities and Yakima, you don't need to go anywhere in the world. You, you can visit everything. My, you can imagine my disappointment. I thought it was the Tri-Cities, T-R-Y. <laughs> yeah. Oh! He says, uh, Steve enjoys both. From Munda. Thanks, Lakewood Larry. Yeah. It's pretty good. Have you guys have you guys seen this new viral challenge on social media? Instead of saying cheese, people on Twitter are throwing actual slices of cheese at babies, and it's called getting cheesed. I don't Dude. like wasting cheese, but I like throwing things at babies. So <laughs> the, the, the video of this little brother throwing. I saw the video and I honestly admit I laughed out loud when yeah. the freaking cheese just stuck on the kid's face. It's yeah. the funniest thing ever. It really is. Marilyn Manson do that with lunch meat. That was Papa Roach. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Well, Ryan Castle, speaking of lunch meat, that. he's your lunch meat. He's coming up next with a 12 pack. BJ and Miggs play of the day. And for me, it's that I like to do naked. So, oh, really? No. That would be really. You take off all your clothes, you really do that. Sometimes keep my shirt on, but for the most part, everything else is off. I mean, if I'm home, yeah. Yeah, like no pants. So you take everything off. Yeah. yeah. You both are weird. Oh. No, maybe you're weird and you just don't know it. I'm just imagining Steve just like sitting there, pure freedom, kicking his legs in the air, like just doesn't have any care at all. I feel so free. DJ and Mix mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. Here's another question from a listener. I have a mountain of credit card bills and consumer debt. Can I still keep my house if I file bankruptcy? Yes, you almost always can keep your home and, and your house, your car in a, in a bankruptcy. Depending on what type of bankruptcy you file uh, would depend on whether or not, for example, you can keep your vehicles if you have payments on them still. You can almost always keep your home if if you're current on the payments on your home, even in full bankruptcy. In Chapter 13, uh, you can also keep those items. If you're behind on your house, you could catch your house payments up in a Chapter 13, take off a second mortgage in a Chapter 13. So keeping your, your primary assets like a home and car is almost always possible in bankruptcy. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. And thanks for listening. I'm Erin Ryan, political commentator, comedy writer, and host of Crooked Media's Hysteria. And I'm co-host Alyssa Mastromonaco, former White House Deputy Chief of Staff for President Obama. Each week on Hysteria, we are joined by a team of hilariously opinionated ladies to discuss the headlines from the serious to the absurd. We cover everything from reproductive rights to rom-coms and break down the political news of the week and cultural stories that affect women's lives. New episodes of Hysteria drop every Thursday. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.